Linux market share is a hotly discussed topic. From August of 2024, Linux market share approaching 4.5% for the first time could hit 5% by Q1 2025. Steam on Linux ends 2024 with a nice boost to its market share. Sometimes though, it's not all good. Here's from five years ago. Linux market share for September 2022 is, shall we talk about something else? It is growing steady. This is from four months ago, 3.99%. And recently, you've probably seen a lot of these articles. According to one source, Linux hits over 6% desktop user share. Linux has over 6% desktop market share. Yes, you read that right. Here's how. We made Linux great again. Linux desktop usage hits record high in the US. All of these recent articles, about 6% are pulling from analytics.usa.gov, a government website tracking various bits of data. If we go down to this bit right here, set it to the past 30 days, there you go, 6.2% on Linux. Where does this data come from though? If we go to the about section right here under about this site, this website provides a window into how people are interacting with the government online. The data comes from a unified Google Analytics account for US federal government agencies known as the Digital Analytics Program. So basically, it's keeping an eye on what people are visiting government websites with, what operating system they're on, what browser they're on, what states they're in, things like that. It's not worldwide numbers. Yes, people from outside the US might visit these sites, but the majority of people are going to be in the United States of America. However, when we talk about Linux user market share, there are generally two sites being referenced. Sometimes it is other things, but these are the main ones. Firstly is StatCounter. Secondly is the Steam Hardware Survey. Now you might not recognize the name StatCounter, but you will recognize this graph, the desktop operating system market share worldwide. This is what a lot of people often reference when talking about the market share. Now, none of these sources are inherently bad and you should never look at them, whether that be StatCounter, the Steam Hardware Survey, analytics.usa.gov, all of these things have a value. This isn't something like MMOpopulation.com, which includes games which are not MMOs. And people actually still reference this site. I don't know why anybody takes it seriously. Not like that. These are real data points. But you need to look at them in the context of what the data is representing and the limitations of that data. The problem is oftentimes people talk about these numbers as the actual market share of Linux. This is how many people are using Linux. 4.1% of people are on Linux. 6% of people are on Linux. What does the Steam Hardware Survey say right now? It is 2.57% of people are on Linux. All of these are obviously different numbers, which should initially tell you that all of these are tracking different things. And I understand why people get excited about these numbers, and there is still a reason to get excited about them. But not necessarily about the raw number itself, but where that number is going. And when you talk about these data points, you need to keep in mind what the data is actually representing. Here is the FAQ on stat counter. Point number one, what methodology is used to calculate stat counter global stats? This is the most important thing. Stat counter is a web analytics service. Our tracking code is installed on more than 1.5 million sites globally. These sites cover various activities and geographic locations. Every month, we record billions of page views to these sites. For each page view, we analyze the browser, operating system, screen resolution used, and we establish if the page view is from a mobile device. We provide independent, unbiased stats on internet usage trends. We do not collate our stats with any other information sources. No artificial weightings are used. We remove bot activity and make a small adjustment to our browser stats for pre-rendering in Google Chrome. Aside from those adjustments, we publish the data as we record it. In other words, we calculate our global stats on the basis of more than 5 billion pages 
paid dues per month by people from all over the world onto our 1.5 million member sites. By collating our data in this way, we track the activity of third party visitors to our member websites. We do not calculate our stats based on the activity of our member sites alone. This helps to minimize bias in the data and achieve a random sample. TLDR, it collects all of this information from all of these different sites that stat counter is installed on and then removes bot activity, counts up everyone who's visiting the site, and then you get your stats, and you get graphs that look something like this. Now, firstly and most notably, it is quite common on Linux to spoof what browser you are using. Now, is that going to be a massive percentage of people? It's kind of unclear, but it is something that is definitely actively discussed, and a lot of browsers do this out of the box in the way they've been packaged on Linux. Usually not into some weird random group that doesn't make any sense, but hiding in plain sight. Spoofing yourself as Chrome on Windows because most people are Chrome on Windows. Secondly, some of the oddities in the data. Most notably is OSX and macOS. These are both correct names for Apple's operating systems. The thing is that the rebrand to macOS happened about nine years ago. So I have doubts that 9.91% of Apple users are on a really old version of an Apple computer. That just doesn't really align with, especially the majority, right? Like if these numbers were flipped, I could see it. But this doesn't make any sense for the older one to be the larger group. Now, I don't think these numbers are made up. I just don't understand why they are two separate numbers and not merged together into one when you don't have, you know, Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11, all the separate things. Why is the Apple system, which you know is the same operating system, two separate entries. Then you have this weird unknown segment. I don't think this is, you know, 9% BSD users or 9% people with mangled user agents. I don't understand what this is and why this is over double the Linux market share. This right here is a very strange data point. None of this is to say the data is useless and should never be looked at again. It's not MMO population where the numbers appear to be made up. I don't even know what it's supposed to be here. But it mustn't be used without context on what the numbers are. If you are comparing the data month to month, so you're saying, okay, so in January, it's X number, in February, it's Y number, in March, it's Z number. And you look at those numbers and you see, okay, that number is trending in a direction. Or you go year on year on year. You see the numbers are trending in a direction, whether that be up or down. That has value. Because what you were looking at there isn't necessarily the specific number itself. You don't really care that it's... 4.1% or 5% or 37% or whatever the number is, but you're looking at the direction the number is heading. Number go up, number go down. That tells you something of value. But specifically 4.1%, this doesn't actually mean anything without knowing what the rest of the data is and understanding why there are these oddities. And if you're comparing this number against other sources, like the Steam Hardware Survey, like the USA numbers, this can't really be done because all of those are tracking different things. Now, since I mentioned it a few times, let's talk Steam Hardware Survey. I love this site. Everybody loves this site. If you randomly get picked to do the Steam Hardware Survey, most people do it because it's something cool to do. And that's the thing with the data. I have not been able to find a explanation for their methodology. It appears like every month a random amount, maybe not random, some subset of the Steam user base is randomly sent surveys. How many? Who gets them? I know there's a lot of people who've been on Steam for many years who've never seen them. None of this, from what I can tell, is publicly documented. 
But what we can say is this is a sampling of the Steam user base. And what is the Steam user base? The Steam user base, majority, yes, there are applications like Critter, other things like that, but the majority of people on Steam are gamers. I think that's a pretty uncontroversial thing to say. Now, with what we can see of the system, it does obviously have some problems. Firstly, dual boots aren't counted because you'll get a survey once for your account. So whichever system you're on when you happen to see the survey is the system that is going to be counted. So if you're someone who does have both, if you are someone who has a Steam Deck and a Windows system, for example, only one of those systems is going to be counted. Now, how much does that influence the data? It's hard to say, but it is going to influence it somewhat. Also, due to the size of the data set, it is prone to wild shifts. Yes, there is a lot of Steam users, but they're all here for a specific purpose. And earlier this year, February 2025, Steam Hardware Survey, Linux drops 0.61% to 1.45%. Windows 10 went up by 10.47%. So, what's most likely that happened here is Chinese internet cafes and updating systems and Chinese internet cafes. There was also like a big spike in the Chinese usage on Steam. They have been prone to just randomly change the metrics with millions of systems just suddenly changing. After that month, things settled back into what they were before. But you have to keep things like that in mind, especially when you're just looking at a single data point. I think the biggest takeaway from everything I'm saying here is individual data points are neat and they are fun to talk about, but are ultimately useless. Seeing what it looks like in just a single month, if you took, say, this one, it would look really, really bad. But if you take the past year of data, the past three years of data, that tells a very very different story. So here we have on Gaming on Linux, the Steam Tracker. This keeps track of the Steam Hardware Survey over the months. And look at that. Going back to 2018, to June 2025, it is clearly trending in a direction. It is trending upwards, not at the fastest rate possible, but it is trending in that direction. Linux usage is going up. And I know, big number, big excitement. I get it, right? Like, I totally get it. But keep things grounded. Focus on the mission. Focus on things getting more popular, things getting bigger, not necessarily these arbitrary, not entirely accurate milestones. But what do you think? Do you care about these big milestones? Do you even care that Linux is trending upwards? Do you want Linux to be more popular? I'd love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video, go subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you, like, uh, you really like the video, yeah, if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Linux. Big number, big happy.